A year ago, the High Valley Manufacturing Catapult was looking for a project to show off the capabilities of the seven centres that make up the network. We chose the Sitski as a project partly because it's got a good need and there were some real technological advances that we could make, but also because it involved composites and metal parts, measurement, digital, and all of these different skills that we use in projects for our commercial customers. As we've said before, often we use these skills and capabilities in a secretive environment. We can't tell anybody about the work that we do. And the job of the High Valley Manufacturing Catapult is to increase productivity for the UK and to help all manufacturing companies across the country. What we've done with this project is done a complete start to finish from concept all the way through to a manufactured product and we're showing companies who need these capabilities that these technologies are available now, that they do work, and that we should be using them in more applications. When IHVM Catapult suggested I get involved with this project, I was really excited by the idea, and it's amazing to have seen a dream really develop and have all the engineering go into it and now here we are testing out the actual new amazing lightweight monoski. Here we have the entire sit ski assembly. We've got the additive layer manufactured foot which is titanium material. We've also got the top plate, the push rod and the rocker. Uh, clamped in between these two titanium pieces we've got the carbon fibre spring. That feeds up into the aluminium bracket. We've got the aluminium chassis bracket at the top where the rocker is housed and that rocker is connected through to the damper. We've got the carbon fibre composite chassis which is assembled into the aluminium bracket and we've also got the carbon fibre bodywork, seat, footrest and fairings. We um, collected a large amount of data with various sensors and we've used that to drive a kinematics model um, here at the NCC. Um, from that, we derived the required spring stiffnesses, damper rates, kinematic properties we needed for our design. Um, we then went and built a stress model of the new design in order to um, derive the layup, the thicknesses, the widths we needed for the spring component. And we also built a simple model of the test piece in order to validate the design in terms of stiffness and strength requirements. We've been asked to make part of the suspension of the Sitski, uh, specifically using electron beam melting, which is a powder bed fusion additive manufacturing process, meaning that it's it's uh, a powder bed is spread across a platform and then layer by layer it's melted using an electron beam. So some of the main benefits of electron beam melting additive manufacturing process over other additive manufacturing processes is that uh, because it's an electron beam, it can be controlled using electromagnets, so the scan speed is much greater than that of, say, lasers, where they're controlled by mirrors. Another advantage is that because it, using electron beam it's a hot process, there's no residual stress in the part, and therefore it doesn't need any heat treatment. Another advantage is the support structures. The semi-sintered cake of the powder allows for support structures to be floating, so they don't have to be attached to anything in specific including the base plate. This means that when it comes to removal of the part from the machine, it doesn't have to be removed via a machining process or any sort of cutting process. It can it's not bonded to the base plate at all. Working with the engineers, we try and reduce the amount of machining required on these components during the design for manufacture process. During the additive manufacturing process, you can't always achieve the uh, tolerances required and the surface finish requirements. On this particular component, we have bearing gauges, uh, fits uh, that are sub 10 micron in nature. So typically in additive manufacturing, you can get a part that's very organic in shape and actually very difficult to hold. In general terms, near net shape manufacturing, you don't want to be adding material on that you don't require. But in our case, we needed to, to ensure that we can uh, fixture and manufacture this part properly. 
So for instance, we've added on some features at, at, on the top, which is going to allow us to get our alignment and also ensure that these two bottom faces are planar to each other and parallel. That's going to really uh, help us in, in, in the advancement of, of the fixturing and the uh, programming stage. Here at the AMRC, we're manufacturing a number of metallic components for the Sitski project. We're machining these from solid because it offers us a number of advantages over other processes. Chiefly, we can guarantee the microstructure of these components, but it also offers us some cost benefits. A block of material purchased from a local supplier might only cost us £30, compared to uh, many times that from an additive produced component. To produce these parts, we're going to call upon a range of skills and experience that we have here at the AMRC, including an understanding of machining dynamics, machinability of materials, tooling and fixturing, which we can use to produce the parts to the drawings. At the AMRC, we spend a considerable amount of time looking at the machinability of materials, the correct tooling solutions to use, and also the tool paths used to remove material from parts and all of this knowledge has been used to program these parts and put together the right solution for this project. Yeah, it's an incredible to see how many technologies have been used on this project. I mean, if you look at the composite side, you know, a leaf spring built into this sit ski there. I mean, taken from the running blade, say, from uh, the Summer Paralympics, and so many, you know, versatile uses that can be used at, not just sort of Formula One technology of fairings and, and crash sort of tested stuff. And then secondly, there's topology optimization, which is like a design tool, I've been told, that sort of grows these skeletal structures. And they put all the strengths in the right places and it gets rid of all the excesses. And one of the things that we, we as sports people, we're looking for is make things nice and light. And so it's not just sports, but it can be used across, you know, every single industry. So taking that optimised design and then manufacturing it through a 3D printer, you're able to design one-off pieces of equipment that enabled this team, incredible team, to put this all together in such a short time. Here at the NCC, we've taken the design of the Sitski from the virtual world in our Katia CAD software. We then created uh, some moulds, which are made from an epoxy tooling board commonly known as blue block. Uh, so for this project we've used a couple of different uh, fibres and resin systems. So for the main structural components we've used what's called unidirectional or UD fibres. They're nice long strings of carbon fibres and give you some real strength for the real critical areas. We've also then used woven material uh, which gives you a really nice surface finish and a really nice pattern uh, for sort of a lot of the fairings as well for that. Uh, and also for, uh, to help us with some impact protection, we've actually included some rubber into the layouts themselves as well. At the uh, NCC, we are using some new novel composites. Um, the main uh, structure of the Sitski is using a graphite-enhanced prepreg. Prepreg is a pre-impregnated fibre, so you have the fibre and the resin, which is um, put together, and then it's placed onto a roll. Um, this roll is then taken off and then we can cut it into sizes like this and then we have the prepreg there so you can see there how it's shiny and that's from the resin and um, the fabric material you can see the direction there. Um, so this is one of the materials we're using on the bodywork. Also in combination with the bodywork we're using this material which is a, a unvulcanized rubber called Krybin and we're using this on the bodywork to give better impact protection so if there is any small crashes or any impacts to the Sitski bodywork then um, there shouldn't be any damage to the composite. So one of the key aspects of the project has been making sure we can provide a level of assurance that not only is the device fit for purpose but that it's safe to use under controlled conditions. Um, we've had to manage a number of different interfaces not only between the physical interactions between the components and the materials that they're made from but also in terms of the transfer of design data and other information across the catapult centres and within the centres themselves. Um, so in order to do this, we've had to use a number of different virtual design and analysis tools, uh, which enables us to reduce the time taken to make key decisions and also to ensure that the components are right first time. The composite uh, spring actually is a very complex, uh, is a very complex part. So what we have done is to ensure that uh, the mechanical characteristics has been analysed previously uh, by modelling and finite element analysis. 
And after doing that, what we have to do is to validate that this model is real. And for that, we have to actually test the real component. Well, we were calculating what, which were the, the real conditions, the real uh, mechanical loads that uh, the person who is going to actually use this, this equipment is going gonna, is gonna to assert on the, on the equipment. So after doing this analysis, we have a prepared, like we are uh, preparing, you know, constructing a rig, which is this one. And what we are going to try is to apply uh, the forces, uh, the maximum forces we are, we are, we are calculating, uh, the real thing is going to experience uh, while they are skiing with, with it. Today, we've been testing a device that's got technology from the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, the Manufacturing Technology Centre and the National Composite Centre. We've brought together the capabilities of those centres very quickly to produce this prototype device. We've had Olympic athletes testing it and they've said that it's really exciting, really interesting to see these technologies applied to a new sector and there's no reason that they can't filter out to other manufacturing companies and devices across the UK. It's been great working with the HVM Catapult. It's, it's been fascinating seeing the different centres bring their different skills all together to, to create this amazing project. It was incredible to ski. I mean, it is so different to the things that we've used in the past. And I've skied a bit of, a bit of everything. It was very quirky in some ways, you know, and in others, it was powerful. It was supportive. It had, you could feel that leaf spring working. You could feel uh, the dampener under the seat absorbing and feeling and acting like legs. So, you know, it, it had all the attributes to, to actually become what it was meant to be. And that's a good sit ski.